It is yet another uh, foggy morning here in this redwood grove. So I've hiked down to take advantage of it and I'm super stoked to have these conditions again. Uh, two days in a row, this is awesome. So it's actually more dense than it was yesterday. So the fog's, you know, collecting in all the leaves and the branches of the trees and it's actually falling down kind of a little bit of rain actually. The mist itself is kind of fogging up my camera lenses. So I have to like make sure I wipe the front element before I take the shot. So I've set myself up a composition again, looking out towards these redwood trees. I got one prominent tree in the foreground and it's got kind of some ferns in the base of it. Kind of cut those off a little bit though, because I couldn't quite get everything in frame that I wanted here. So I'm shooting this one just right off trail side here with my Nikon 90 millimeter, that 4.5 lens. It is a wide angle, but I'm pretty close to my subject and I can't really back up much further because I run out of trail here. But this one tree trunk's got some uh, branches kind of sticking off the sides of it that I thought were kind of interesting. So I wanted to kind of try to balance between getting more of those branches and more of the ferns and branches. Yeah, yeah. so I just had to kind of pick a middle spot. Then there's one bunch of branches that are kind of sticking out up the left of this tree trunk there. And I think it looks pretty good. Lots of mist in the background. Lots of, there's open sky over the ocean over there. So uh, it's pretty bright in this patches of the sky portions, but the mist kind of helps it kind of bloom out a little bit. Even though those parts of the sky will probably overexpose in the film, uh, maybe it'll just kind of add to the effect. That's my hope, we'll see. Light just changed. So I loaded some Portra 160 into my film holders when I got to the trailhead this morning. And that's what I'm shooting now. So my hope is that uh, the latitude of Portra will help with the highlights. As I understand it, uh, it tends to lean pastel when you push the film a little bit. All over my trees and my foreground and stuff, I should have a correct exposure on. I'm not trying to push the film at all to really exaggerate the pastel colors. But I am okay with that on the highlights. The highlights can just do whatever they want. So what I'm saying is I expose for the tree trunks and stuff. So the foreground uh, should be correct. So with Portra's faster ASA at 160, it gave me a little bit faster of a shutter speed too. So at F32, it was one second. Uh, and then the second shot, uh, my light changed on me a little bit. So I opened up my aperture a third stop to help compensate for that. So that was one third less than F32, F27 or something like that, whatever it is. One second again. So it's two shots on this composition. I did have a little bit of uh, breeze rolling through here, moving my ferns around the foreground and uh, branches that are up higher on the tree trunk. So probably will have a little bit of motion blur there because uh, I've been sitting here waiting and it's not stopping. They're still moving around. So I decided to make a compromise and go for it. And I think I'm okay with that. The whole background's gonna be soft with all the mist and stuff. So I think it'll be okay. Yeah, first composition in the morning. Uh, pretty happy with that. This fog has been hanging in here for quite a minute now. So it's been a couple hours around the trail kind of scouting around, looking for things that uh, I haven't shot already. Walked past a couple of my other compositions already and it's kind of nice to see those and think to myself, yeah, glad I shot that. <laughs> so I think it's time to pack the camera back in the bag and head on down trail and see what else I can work with here while I still have these awesome conditions. It's just beautiful. So here's one Portra exposure and tell you the truth between this that one and the second one I can't really tell the difference I don't know which one's which looks like this one might have just a slight bit more motion blur now the fog in these scenes is like rolling through the trees it's moving so you can kind of on some of these ones, not so much on this one but on some of them you can kind of see patches of fog that are more dense than other spots and places that have kind of moved inside the exposure but on this one it looked, it looked pretty still exposure looks good um uh, this is actually the first time i've ever shot portra on the 4x5 i shot it on smaller formats but never run anything this big and you know i think it handled it really well it might be a tough call for me as to whether or not i prefer this or ektar on this kind of scene ektar is more saturated i think portra is a little more delicate with colors uh, but the exposure looks great it looks like it handled these highlights really well Sharpness looks good. Looks like these foreground plants stayed pretty still for me, but there is just a slight bit of blur up here. 
the top of this this tree branch, which I'm totally okay with. Exposure here on this on this tree trunk is where I metered. It looks like the detail is really good there. Um, it gets a little dark over here, but I'm not too worried about it because I still can see a little bit of detail in there, so I'm not too too worried about that. So yeah, I was pretty happy with Portra and how I rendered this scene. Uh, I'm actually really you know looking forward to shooting some more of it to see how it does. Uh, not every exposure I want to be like super loud and in your face with color. Um, like Ektar is really saturated, so uh, this is just another tool in toolbox. You know, maybe you just kind of hopefully give you a little more of a subdued color, a little more calm feeling was kind of what I was after with this photo. So hopefully that comes across in the final image. Uh, so here's that, and uh, let me know down in the comments if it was successful. Not sure if you can see this on this camera. This lens is getting all fogged up, but uh, the sun's come out and there's like a little rainbow here. Check this out. So it occurred to me to try to set the film camera up on that, but then it was moving towards me really fast and I realized it's because of the sun rays in the sky here. As fast as that's moving, I wouldn't have had time to set the camera up anyway. Uh, so I did take a photo of that with this camera. So if that turned out at all, I'll show you the shot. Super cool. Didn't expect to see that at all. One of the things that keeps grabbing my attention as I walk through these redwood groves is the bark. So I think the bark's already an interesting texture on these redwood trees. It's just full of cool patterns and stuff on some of them. You know, reddish brown and some even grayish color tones. Um, but then you add the green mosses or lichens or whatever's growing on it. And you just get this textured multicolored thing that's just beautiful. And that's what I've come across here that I've set my camera up on now with my 300 millimeter lens. Just filling the frame with this really cool, beautiful looking bark. Uh, but I found a section that's got like some swirl patterns in it, but it's also got like these kind of sections where it's cracked and it's created this little briquette kind of looking pattern. And there's a mushroom growing on there and a bunch of spider webs. It's just like all these elements, it's just too cool not to shoot. So um, I set up a composition that's just focusing in on one tight knit scene. Um, on the side of this massive redwood tree that I'm sitting up against. And I've done my best to try to get the patterns to kind of make sense, you know, to fill the frame. I don't know if I'm doing it any justice or not, I hope so. Uh, but it's just something that I keep seeing that is probably one of the most eye-catching things that I've noticed on some of these trails and just kind of wanted to capture it so that I could have a shot of this, you know? Because, you know, to me, it's kind of part of the experience of walking through these groves. I think it's beautiful. So like I said, I set up my 300 millimeter lens on this one, had to use a lot of bellows extension because I'm pretty close to my subject here, just trying to fill the field of view. That meant that I had to add half a stop of exposure for bellows extension. And then I shot uh, Fuji Velvia on this one. So then uh, since it's in complete shade, the tree's backlit, so it's staying in shade for quite some time. Uh, but with the dim lighting conditions in Velvia uh, being a slow film already, plus reciprocity adjustments, plus Bell's extension. My exposure time ended up being four minutes at F45. So my thinking on this one was that the extra saturation that Velvia adds would help it pop. Uh, but just in case it's a little too much and it starts to look cartoonish, I did take a backup shot with Provia 100. So, and since Provia doesn't experience reciprocity failure quite so bad, uh, the adjustments weren't near as severe on that one. So that was 45 seconds at F45. Compositionally, I hope it did some justice. Um, it's hard to fit, you know, all of this eye candy in one frame, but I did my best I could with one small section that seemed to frame up nicely with a very purposefully placed mushroom in the lower right corner. And if you look really close, there's a really delicate spider web in there too. I thought it was really cool. So that's that. This was kind of probably my last shot out of this location because all the fog's burned off. So I really hope this turns out because I think it's a really eye-catching scene. Uh, it's something a little different. 
you know, you're trying to shoot all these massive trees, you know, and these vista views with awesome fog and all this cool stuff that I've been shooting the last couple of days. But uh, this scene's quite a bit different in the sense that it's, instead of shooting wide, it's shooting really small, tight-knit scenes, so. Here's the first sheet of Elvia. And this is definitely a lot more abstract than a lot of images you would normally see from the Redwoods. I think most people go to the Redwoods and it's assumed that you want to kind of shoot, you know, this, the whole scene and get it all in. But, you know, I think I got a couple images from this trip and other videos that, that captured that as well. But man, I really found myself fascinated with details in this, in this trip. The bark of this tree just captivated me. And I picked this spot in particular because of the patterns in the bark. I don't know if the tree had been damaged at some point or if it's just natural growth or what it is, but there was just like this swoop pattern. And then of course the mushrooms here in the lower corner here on purpose, which I thought was a really cool little detail to kind of help anchor the lower part of the scene. Just a little bit of color contrast and something bright sticking out there. Now the image is just absolutely tack sharp. I was really stoked with that. I think that 300 millimeter lens did a great job on this one. And Velvia, I think, did just fine. I think it warrants being a really saturated image. I like the fact that it's kind of darker tonality too. I think it, it I think it gets across exactly what I was thinking of when I was sitting here looking at this in, in the field. Now the second exposure, just a slight bit darker. I was still uh, kind of going back and forth on reciprocity adjustments. Like I said in a previous video, I had conflicting information and I think I figured it out now which one's correct. This one was shot with the information I got from the data sheets and this was a different app and I think this one's wrong. I can't remember what the difference was, but I think it very clearly renders out in the film. Now it might be harder to see this on this camera up here, but I can see it sitting here on the light table. I can see it night and day. This one's definitely brighter. And then I did shoot a Provia image of this one and to no surprise to anyone, uh, it's a lot flatter. And I think coming from the Velvi image and look at the, this one, it's just, it just doesn't do it. Just does not do the job. I think this one is, this one's where it's at. Now, as of the day of recording this, this just happens to be the very same day the announcement from Fujifilm went over across the internet and it's all over social media right now that they're discontinuing the sheep film formats of Fuji Chrome Velvia 50, uh, which is very, very disappointing. But fortunately, uh, like a lot of us landscape photographers, I've got, you know, a safety stock of Velvia 50 in my freezer. So I got a couple boxes left before I'm completely out. RIP Velvia 50. Maybe someday uh, we'll, we'll get to see it resurrected again. So this was the last image I took uh, on my film camera anyway uh, for my July of 2021 summer trip to the California Coastal Redwoods. I think it was a pretty cool image to end on. Uh, I was pretty happy with it. I think it turned out great. Uh, hopefully you do too. But as always, let me know down in the comments what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed this series from Redwoods. Uh, and if you did, you can let me know by hitting that like button down below. And if you want to see what I'm up to next, uh, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. At the time of recording this, I'm actually a week out from my fall trip down to Zion National Park, which I'll be taking, of course, all the film that I can carry. So stay tuned on that. I uh, hope those videos will be coming soon. They're a lot of work to edit so it'll be a little bit of a time delay before you start seeing the first ones come out uh, so yeah get subscribed stay tuned uh, take care of yourselves and i'll see you very soon take care